modeled again, textured it, added a backdrop and made some lighting. Then we made some Geometry Nodes droplets, watched the video on the graph editor and now it's finally time for the first animation. It's going to be the slide in animation. But first I'm going to tell you about some changes that I made in the scene so you can follow exactly what I did step by step. If you want to skip to the animation part, it's right here. So without further ado, let's get started. I changed a couple of things. I went into the texture of this one and I went to my bottom BSDF and I changed the roughness to one. Why did I do that? Well, I thought that the letters were a bit too much obscured. They were very dark and uh, it's because of the reflections that it added. I do not like that. So I changed the roughness to one so that the white text is clearly visible in all renders. I also went over here to the backdrop and I gave it a material and I changed the value over here to one. That makes it extra white, pretty cool stuff. But those are the things that I changed and I just wanted to let you know so that you can follow along exactly what I did. But I just thought it needed a little more tweaking in order to get to the quality that we want to have for these renders. And now it's time to make an animation. So this is going to be the first animation of the product animation course. We're going to have this one slide in and those are going to fall from the sky in a certain type of manner and then slide in as well. We are going to make sure that it all looks smooth. And if you watch the previous tutorial on how the graph editor actually works then you probably already know how and why we are going to do this in this manner. So first things first I'm going to select this can. I'm going to press I and add a location rotation and skill key frame. I am heading over to frame 35 and I'm going to press into edit mode and right here on this line I'm going to press on 2 this line shift s cursor to select it. And now for our pivot point, we can change it to 3D cursor. What that does is we can now rotate along this axis. And that is what we want to do. I want it to look like it's going to topple over, but it's not. It's going to revert back to its old state. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is by adding a keyframe right over here. Uh, let's say we are going to do this. I, location, rotation and skill. Then we're going to frame zero and I'm going to move this over to this side. Now let's see what we're doing because I do not want it to start like this. So I'm going to set it back to median point uh, alt R and then turn it around. So it is already showing the logo location, rotation and skill. Let's see what that does. All right. So now it's sliding in and stopping. So like that. Let's see, no clipping on the underside and that is what we wanted. It has to be on the plane itself. So if it is clipping on the underside, you have probably followed one step wrong. Uh, either way, this is the way it's going to look like. It looks very static and uh, slow moving. This is not a professional looking animation, but we're going to change that in the graph editor. So right now, heading over into the graph editor. What have we got? We have moved this model on the Y axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this uh, lock button and I'm only going to open up my eye location. Then I press A, point, and I don't like that it's all stretched out like this. So what I want to do is I'm going into preferences, going to animation, and here you have several different options that you uh, can choose. And I'm going to select only show selected curves. And in this way, once I press the I and select all and press dot, we get our entire animation on the Y location. I just like to work in that fashion. You might not, I do. So let's keep it going like this. If you watched the previous tutorial, you know that we want this to move along on the table and it comes in fast, slows down and goes back to its original position. So the way that we are going to do that is, well, <laughs> we have to stretch out this line in order to go very fast. And then right over here, it slows down. Very easy stuff. I'm going to select this handle and I'm going to change the handle type. I like working in this fashion because I like to have control over my handles because right now if you move this handle it also moves the handle on, on the other side as you can see and it, it, it does the same over here you know and it creates these weird looking mountain shapes. We do not want that so I'm going to select this one handle type and set it to free and now when I move this handle type it only moves this area and not this area. Uh, we're going to put it up. Why? Because we want it to be fast in the beginning. So right now 
it's already coming in fast, but it's slowing down too quickly. It's already way too slow over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this upwards to the side. All right, already looking a lot better. Look at this, like so. So it comes to a halt very slowly and it comes back. This is exactly what we wanted. So that is done for the Y location. And already it looks so much better than what we had before. So the next part is the rotation. So we rotated it on the X axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close everything off except for our X rotation, which we've got right here. And now what are we going to do with this rotation? First of all, the handle type should be free because I like to work in that fashion. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to do it like that. And if we move this like so, it's going to be very fast and then slowly coming back, falling back into its place just in time. So this can is done. Uh, right over here, we're going to press on this new one. I like to work in the timeline first, place my keyframes there and then go over to the graph editor. Just, just a preference. So what we want to have happen is that at the moment that this falls back to its original position, these ones should be on their position as well. So we're going to extend this to 54, just so we have some breathing room that it can stand still. I like this faster version. It kind of swoops in. Whoopa. So yeah, frame 25 and 40 is where it's at. And back. All right, cool. So we do not have to change this. We can just set it to 50. Like so. Now it really swoops in. And as you might notice, once we're going to render this, we're going to add some motion blur and this will really sell the effect some more and will really make it look uh, better. So let's go over here and we've got that animation done. Now on this 40th frame, this and this should be on its final position. Location and rotation, location and rotation both on the 40th frame. And now I'm going to frame zero. Why not zero? I'm just going to pull it outward and rotate it somewhere. I don't really care where. Something like that. Location and rotation. I'm going to, to do the same for this one. Uh, like so. Location and rotation. And now it's slowly falling on the back side. Looks really weird. But what I want to have happen is that it falls like so and then whoop, slides in like this. And we can do that once again in the graph editor. So let's go ahead to our graph editor. I've got the right can selected right now. Let's see what it looks like. All right, pretty cool. Back into the modeling modus. And let's see, we are first going to work on the Z location because we're moving it upwards and downwards. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can take this one and bring it inwards, it goes very slow. I do not like that. So I'm going to change the handle type to free, who would have guessed? I'm going to bring it down because I want it to fall faster first. Oh, and then it aligns into position. See what I'm meaning right there? Maybe this can go a little bit down. Okay, and slowly down and into the right position. So over here, I pretty much want the C location to be done already. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag this out some more, like this. And it falls and it slides into position. It falls and slides into position. That is exactly what we wanted. It's also moving on the Y axis. So I'm going over to the location of this can and on the Y location, I'm going to unlock it press A, press Adopt, and now we can see our Y animation. Uh, the thing that's happening is it's going over here. We want it to be suspended in the air for a small period of time right over there. Uh, so what does that mean? It comes in falling quickly, shoop, uh, then here it takes a little bit of a break, and then it falls down into its original position in which it should really slide towards. First of all, what I'm going to do is around here, uh, this is where I want the animation to occur. So I'm going to take this and add a location keyframe. Now I'm going to take this one 
and there you have it. I'm actually going to increase it on the X scale and then bring this one to this side, like so, G and X. So let's see what it does. Ah, there you go. And sweeping into position. But I really want it to slide from there on out. And right here, actually, we can move this a bit to the side. There you go. And now it's moving too fast. So I'm going to change this. And I'm going to change this one as well. Ah, there you go. And it's going into its position. All right, very cool. Uh, now, I probably want this can to be pretty much straight at the moment that it starts to speed up over here. And that is the X rotation. So we're going to look into that in a minute. So let's see if this is what we're looking for. I wanted to slide some more on the ground. So maybe we can take the C location and have it occur a lot faster even. Take this one, GX. So that's starting to look very good. I'm going to turn it on and off, and now I'm heading over to our rotation. Uh, let's turn it all on, so everything should be locked. And now we have our X rotation, which is this one. I'm going to open it up, press A, press dot, and now we can see this animation. So what I want to have happen, is that right over here when it starts sliding, it should probably already be nearly done with its, uh, with its rotation on the x-axis so that it becomes more straight. And the way we can do that is simply by taking this one, pressing G and X, and uh, bringing it to the left side. All right, shoof, shoof, yeah. Uh, maybe it can be a little bit slower. All right. Let's see what it looks like in the modeling session. Nice. So this one is done. We can unlock everything so that we can move around the keyframes if we like to. Uh, go over to this one. So we already have our keyframes set and done. Once again, we're going over into the Z location. I'm going to take that, press A, press dot, and lock everything except for the C location. So what do we want to have happen? First, it should fall quickly. And after it has fallen quickly, it should slide in position. So what do we remember? Uh, the steeper the hill, the faster it will be. So we're going to train, change the handle type to free, bring this down and make sure it's a steep hill, fall very quickly. Uh, take the other can as a reference, like so. And now it's kind of falling into the right position. Maybe we can take this one, G and exit. All right, looking good. So now we can change uh, what location? This is the Y location. So close off the C, open up the Y, A dot on the Y location. And I'm seeing that it's already moving in a slightly unnatural fashion towards the side already. Uh, but we want this to end up slowly. So I'm going to take this and drag it like so. I'm going to turn it like so. There you go. So now it's first slowly going to that side and then speeding up towards our ending where it will slow down once again and slides into place. Yeah, pretty cool. But it's not on the ground at this moment that it speeds up. It's already speeding up in its fall. Uh, so what we should probably do is go back to the C location, right over here. And right now it should already be a bit lower. So I'm going to take this one, G and C. There you go. Close it off, go back to the Y location, A, Y. Let's see what this looks like. And it's sliding in position. Maybe we can make it less drastic. That looks a little bit smoother. Uh, and now we want to change the X rotation. So let's open that one up and let's see what we've got. It is going into its final position already over here. 
what if we take this one and actually this one and GX and make sure it's already a bit straighter. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Like so, and then over here, we should probably have a moment of pause and take this, rotate it like so. Yes. Maybe this one can be a little bit more extreme. To the other side. All right, so this looks pretty cool. Sliding in, recovering its position, falling fast, sliding into position right here, slowing down at the very end. And this is actually the first animation that we've made for this product tutorial. I'm going to render it out and show you the final process. Maybe we can change uh, some little things that we do not like about it. Usually the first time is not the best time. But uh, we're going to find out. So let's see, I'm going into my render settings. I want to change the RGB to color depth 16. It just looks better, so I recommend doing that. I'm going to select a folder in which we can uh, place this product animation. I'm just going into my product free course, new folder. So this is product animation number one, slide in. I'm going over into the motion blur and enable it. And uh, I think it's going to look very cool. Let's set it to modeling mode because if you keep it to render mode, the render will be slower because it takes up computing time. So right over here, the render animation. Now, if your render is having trouble with the motion blur and showing all these black lines, there is a solution for this. However, it will increase your render time in this case. Not in every case, but now it will. Uh, I actually use a GPU most of the time, but if you set it to CPU, the problem will be solved. So that is a small workaround that you can use if you are getting these harsh motion blur lines. Uh, I do not know how to fix this in the GPU settings. Still, I tried decreasing the shutter. I tried turning off the auto smooth and other common problems, but it doesn't work. So uh, this is the only solution I have right now. Just set it to CPU and render it again. So here uh, there was a black line at first so i'm going to show you and i already saw these black lines from the can falling and i was like hey what is this uh, but it is due to gpu and motion blur causing some issues anyway you can just render it using the cpu it will be a lot slower a whole lot slower but it will get the job done if you are having these problems and uh, what you can also do is add a motion blur in your favorite editing program but i find that this is the best way to do it for now so i am just going to render it on cpu this looks very cool uh, there are a couple of things that i'd like to change though so first of all this symbol is not white while for the orange one it is white so i'm going to change this symbol to the white and right here we can see our droplets and i think they look pretty cool but they could be a slight bit bigger and besides that the only thing that i want to add is maybe a very very low density volumetric to give some air to the space because now it seems to be taking place in vacuum it's not really that annoying but i think it could be a little bit better by adding a volumetric Basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to improve this render. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm doing all of that extra stuff as well. So it's not like everything went perfect in the first try. And I have to make some adjustments and changes in order to get this the way that I want it to look. We've learned a lot in this video, but the next one will be even better. We're going to make a pop-in effect and learn how to use modifiers in the graph editor to give it that something extra. Click here to watch that video.